The first story arc for, of John Kent's newest Superman book just ended, and I want to talk about it. So, spoilers if you haven't read it, because I'm going to be talking about the first six issues. There's your warning. Let's get into it. This book had an interesting premise. It did not stick the landing. I was not too optimistic, though, because it was Tom Taylor writing it. And Tom Taylor is just ass at the moment at writing comic books. He's written some good stuff here and there, but currently... He's bad, <laughs> and I th I was hoping maybe he'd get some redemption with this, and he'd learn his lessons from the when John Kent was the Superman book, because that book was horrible. Turns out he didn't learn any lessons. This is a little bit better than that title, I will say, but not by much. So, the premise for this book, the selling point that I was excited about, was John is going to confront Ultraman. This is a big deal because if you've been following John's history, you know that the point where he got screwed up, it was because of Ultraman. During Bendis' run, when he was traveling through space with Jor-El, when he was 11 years old, he got sucked through like a black hole and ended up in the in the world where Ultraman is. He went to Earth 3 with Ultraman. I was like, whoa, wow, he's in this other world. Then he gets kidnapped by Ultraman and tortured for like six years. And then he escapes and he comes back and he's 17 and then he never confronts Ultraman ever and there's never anything done with that. Even though there's an interesting story there to tell, nothing was ever done. Well now that story is going to be told. What happens is in the first issue of this, I'll do a brief, a brief recap of issues 1 through 5 and then we'll talk about this ending with issue 6. So what happens in the first issue is President Superman from Earth 2, you know Obama Superman, he comes up and is like, John I need your help, your dad's in danger. Ultraman is going throughout the uh, across the multiverse and he's killing Superman. We need to stop him. We need to stop him before he gets here and kills your dad or kills any other Superman. And also, like a multiverse version of Red Tornado is with him. That's Lois Lane. The three of them go to the universe where they think Ultraman's going to attack next. They go there. They bring a Phantom Zone projector to put him in there because you know they're the good guys. They're not going to kill him or anything. They instantly get taken out by Ultraman. He takes the Phantom Zone projector and sucks in President Superman Red Tornado literally within like one page when they get to that world. And then John lashes out at him and destroys the Phantom Zone projector. So he now can't, you know, go into the Phantom Zone to, prote to potentially help President Superman Red Tornado. Also, Red Tornado got like cut in half by Ultraman during this. So she's not exactly in a good state at the moment. Uh, John and Ultraman have a quick little fight. John has Superman blue powers because he went into space earlier in this issue. And Tom Taylor thought it would be cool to give him the Superman blue powers like Superman used to have. And so, yeah, he's got that now. He hits Ultraman really hard, so hard that Ultraman is like, wow, that's the hardest I've ever been hit ever. And that's a big point that uh, Tom Taylor tries to get across in this series is that John is like super duper powerful now. And he's like one of the most powerful guys in the DC universe. That's what Tom Taylor keeps trying to push in this series for some reason. But anyways, he hits Ultraman real hard. They're both like there on the ground. Ultraman recovers and was like, nice, dude, you hit me really hard. Well, now I'm going to take you back to my volcano and just use you as a play toy whenever I feel like it. And also I'm going to torment your mother forever. And that's what he says he's going to do to John. And John's just like all passed out because he just sucked himself dry when he was trying to, uh, when he used his Superman blue powers. He doesn't know how to control him. But then Injustice Superman shows up and kills Ultraman. So this interesting premise of John confronting Ultraman, something really cool happening there and like very interesting, just gets thrown out the window because Tom Taylor wants to pull Dave Filoni and throw his universe in there because Injustice was, uh, was Tom Taylor's thing. You know, it wasn't created by him, but he did the comics, and he he has had the most influence over that universe out of anyone because he wrote so many comics for the Injustice comics, and I never really cared for those. I'm not a big fan of the Injustice world. I think it's kind of lame, and I don't think the comics are very good. I like the games. They're fun to play, but the storytelling is uh, not why I play those games. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I thought they had a really interesting premise here, and then that premise was thrown out the window, so that was kind of sad. The next several issues, like, nothing happens. It's kind of just like John goes to Injustice World. Superman, you know, if you don't know about the Injustice World, what happened there is Superman got tricked by the Joker to think that he was fighting Doomsday, but he was actually fighting pregnant Lois Lane, and he killed her and his unborn child. So, yeah. It kind of drove him crazy, and he became a dictator. And... That's where we're at on Injustice. So it's kind of a big deal for him to see John because he's like, this is my unborn son from another universe. Now he's, this is how he would have been if it weren't for the Joker and all that. 
And there's something to be said about that being interesting, but that wasn't like the selling point of the series. And also, I just don't care about the Injustice universe. It's been around for a while, and I, I've never found it interesting. I just don't care. But this, it's Tom Taylor's baby, so he's like, this is great. People love Injustice because I made it. So I'm going to make this series all about Injustice and my version of John Kent. And so John kind of just like goes around for a while. He's like, uh, Superman's so happy to see him. He's showing him how great the world is. And John's like, wow, there's no crime in this world. But then he discovers that people are scared of Superman. And so he's like, wow, what's going on in this world? Something's not right. Why are people scared of Superman? So then he finds his the Injustice version of Jay Nakamura, which uh, I hate Jay Nakamura. He's the most annoying character. He's so bland and boring and not interesting. And he's just like the epitome of everything that's wrong with Tom Taylor's writing. He's so bad. And this, when this uh, book was first announced, because it was announced that he was going to be going through the multiverse to, like, uh, fight Ultraman, I was like, oh, cool. That means Jay's not coming, right? It's going to be John on his own? Yes. But no, he just goes to find another Jay. And they have just some horrific dialogue where they're being really dumb, talking back and forth. And it's just, it's so cringe. It's bad. I, it's so horrible reading it them talking to each other and this jay who you know this jay who has lived through all these horrible atrocities that superman has committed in the injustice universe just believes everything that john says and is very cool with him just trusts him instantly it's like are you a dumbass you see what superman's done you don't believe that there could be another superman super person kryptonian that he could have brought in and this is all a trick for some reason instead you're just like yeah i trust him and he's all like, yes, other universe me gets to sleep with Superman. This is awesome. <laughs> it's like, what? He doesn't say exactly that, but he essentially says that. He's like, good job, other universe me, for getting with Superman. And it's so bad. It's horrible. But anyways, Jay tells him that, like, yeah, this Superman's bad. And he uh, regularly performs public execution of superheroes. And, and John's like, hmm... Lots to think about here. And then he talks to the uh, Resistance, which is, you know, led by Batman, Harley Quinn, and all them. And he realizes that Batman was mean to Damien because Damien was the reason that Dick Grayson died in this universe. And remember, that was a Tom Taylor thing. That wasn't a video game thing. Tom Taylor was the one that decided that, uh, that Dick's death should be due to his neck, like, landing on a pebble. Yeah. Remember that? That was because of Tom Taylor. That was just such a stupid death. And that guy's writing the Nightwing book. Woohoo! Anyway, <laughs> uh, John's like, hmm, on the one hand, Superman is a fascist dictator that performs public executions of superheroes all the time. But on the other hand, Batman was kind of rude to Damien, and I like Damien, so mm, I don't know who I can trust or who I can support. Because he talks to the Resistance. He's like, I don't know if I want to fight Superman. I don't know if I can do that. I can, I'm kind of with you guys, but also I don't know. And it's like, what, there's, what are you talking about? How are you in the middle on this? What? what? <laughs> it makes no sense. And then issue six starts out interesting because they, uh, at the end of like issue five, the 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 resistance they get captured and Bat and Batman's gonna get executed by Superman Batman and I can't remember. I just read this issue and I can't remember I think it was Batman and Catwoman it's very forgettable it was, I think it was Batman and Catwoman it was Batman and someone were gonna get executed on live TV so John's like I gotta stop this but I obviously can't take on the whole Justice League at once so he picks them part one by one he actually has an interesting conversation with Barry that I like where he talks to Barry and he's like Barry I know you could potentially stop me please just don't show up. He's like, don't come to school today, Barry, essentially. And Barry's like, I, and that part was interesting. And it's kind of cool seeing how he takes out everyone else. He kind of just bitches Hawk girl. He just rips her wings out and just places her somewhere. And it's like, oh, wow. Action in the Tom Taylor book. I'm not used to this. Cause generally it's just a bunch of people preaching at other people. And that's how Tom Taylor books are. The hero just preaches at people, but let rest assured if you thought this might be a good comic book where there's some action and interesting things happens just you wait the other half of the comic book is just john preaching at everyone <laughs> and uh yeah so you get some interesting stuff of him taking out the just league and seeing what he's doing uh and then in the end he confronts superman and superman's got jay nakamura in prison because damien captured him because damien followed him prior when he went to jay nakamura and uh so jobs clark is then like yeah, John, you don't understand what happened. You know, they took Lois and you from me. 
And John's like, you know, Superman's got to be better than that. He can't just uh, unravel when one thing doesn't go his way. And so then Clark's like, well, you don't understand. What if someone killed Jay? So then he, instead of killing Jay, which you think would prove his point, he just breaks Jay's arm. And John then gives him a hug and is like, I believe in you. You can do better. And then Cyborg of that universe sends John back to his universe. And that's that's the climax. John preaches a bunch. I'm skipping over the preaching, but there's a lot of preaching here going on. Like John's constantly, it feels so horrible. Cause some of my favorite parts of Superman comics are like, when you have a great writer are his speeches. When he gives like, he gives like these great, like hopeful, inspiring speeches, like the end of Superman up, up and away when he's talking about when he's talking to Lex and he's talking about as long as Lex is there, like he'll always be there to stop him. And it's a great speech because especially everything that led up to that moment where Superman had been gone for a year because of the, what happened in Infinite Crisis where he didn't have his powers and Lex thought he was gone, but then he just shows up specifically to stop Lex and Lex is like just mind blown and pissed off about this and Clark just explains about how like as long as, you know, they're bad, they're all always be there to stop it and it's like a really good speech and I love it, but it doesn't come off as like Superman being some weird like holier than thou uptight like guy preaching at you like every time john talks i'm like i just wish he would die like <laughs> tom taylor is so bad at writing the dialogue it's horrible and everything is like no john will not fight the fascist dictator that killed tons of people and was planning to perform a public execution john's just gonna hope he does better after he hugs him and talks to him and also why didn't injustice superman kill jay nakamura he should have if you want to prove that john is better than this uh superman he should have killed Jay and then had him be peaceful. No, he just broke Jay's arm. He can recover from that. Jay's fine. That sucks. And that's like, yeah, but like Jay's fine in the long run. Why didn't he, if he wanted to prove a point, why didn't he kill Jay? I don't, it was stupid. This com. this was so disappointing. Like the premise was interesting, but then the premise gets thrown out the window after one issue. And then the first part of the last issue is actually interesting, seeing him strategically take out the Justice League. And then the next half is just him preaching at people. And it's horrible writing. Like it's so bad. Tom Taylor does not understand how to write John. And it really sucks that this character was one of the most promising new DC characters of the past decade. I loved John. Like, he was written so well by Dan Jurgens and Peter Tomasi, and he's still written well in the uh, Action Comics backstory from Dan Jurgens. But in this, it's so bad. Also, I hate his costume, by the way. His current suit sucks ass. It's bad. At the very end of the issue, John talks about how he understands now why his dad doesn't do more. He talks about how it would be too easy. It's not that it's hard. It's too easy, and then you can get full of power, and you become, like, Injustice Superman. This is hilarious because this is Tom Taylor trying to address the criticism he got for issue two of his original Superman series with John Kent, where he had John just berate Clark, asking him why he doesn't do more and why he just sits back and lets people suffer. And he came off in his little speech to Clark, he came off as very much like dictator vibes. I pointed that out in my video and a bunch of other people pointed it out as well, where it's like, yeah, John didn't exactly sound like a hero trying to help people. He sounded like some god above all that knows what's right and wrong and can make the decision for the puny humans. And uh, I fully believe that Tom Taylor fully believed in what John was saying in that issue. I don't think he planned that, oh, I'll have this come full circle later with Injustice Superman. I don't think so at all. I think when he was writing the story, he saw the opportunity to right his wrongs and be like, oh, I can address that and act like I knew this the whole time and I was actually self-aware and had this planned. I don't think so. I think Tom Taylor's a big dumbass that believed what John was saying and believed John was right to break Clark there. But I think he then retconned himself, essentially, and been like, no, no you know, this was all just for, uh, for John to learn a lesson. That's what I think. And also something that's funny throughout this is like in issue two, the President Superman and Red Tornado get thrown to the Phantom Zone and John is like never worried about them and doesn't care and never tries to help them. And then you think at the end of this, like the next arc would be that, but no, it's like Beast Wars or something. Like he's going to go fight Mr. Beast or something. Like it's not a tease about him going to the Phantom Zone or anything unless the Beast thing is in the Phantom Zone. I don't know, but it's like President Superman and them are just in the Phantom Zone. You destroyed the Phantom Zone projector. Why are you not worried about that? It's so weird, but... Yeah, that's basically all I have to say. Uh, if you want a good Superman comic, though, thankfully Action Comics and Superman 
are really good right now. So I don't want to leave it off on a bad note because I see people all the time, rightfully so, a lot of the time complaining about the current state of comics. But also there are good comics and it's not too hard to find them. Action Comics and Superman are both really good right now. We got this stupid DC event like Night Terrors going on. That's dumb. But when we're out of that event, the books are actually good. So if you want a good Superman book, you got that. It's just if you want a good John Kent book, good luck. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, I want to hear from you guys down in the, in the comments. Not the description. That's where I write. In the comments, uh, what did you guys think of this? Did you read the John Kent comic? I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say. And thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all later. Hey, skinny boy, saucy boy, I be running to the bank. Yeah, you know I hit the gas in the whip full tank. Riding, riding past the ocean while I'm listening to Frank.